So how's everybody doing today? Doing good, thank you. A bit tired. I'm tired too. So I'm sure a lot of other people are tired as well. Um, personally, I wish I was in this giant arcade behind me playing video games all day, but alas, being somewhere does not actually online does not actually mean I am somewhere. All right. So today uh, we are going to do another in class exercise. Um, just a couple of things to note first. First, nice dog. Uh, first, the uh, second a quiz seems to have completely fuddled a lot of things, um, such as the ability, such as like. A bunch of the parts and puzzles um, were not like they they didn't save for some reason. Like the other two answers are there, but the two parts and puzzles aren't. So if you tried the two, but I can tell the difference between students who who did something originally and it didn't save it versus students who didn't turn anything in. So I will be going through manually, which is exhausting, but I'll be doing that and fixing the the lab two grades, um, we're gonna or the quiz two grades. We're, I've put one last one a quiz on on Runestone, and if this doesn't work and we still got a lot of headaches with it, then I might just switch back to Canvas for the quizzes. But um, this one should be fine. Um, let's see, quiz three will be due um, on. Let's see, do I have? Ch Okay, so quiz three will be due. Oh, yeah, I was wondering why that wasn't showing up. I'm in the wrong class, or I'm looking at the wrong classes modules. Um, let's see. So, yeah, do do do. Share screen. So yeah, uh, module, module six. Right, link to the quiz is over here. Um, be sure to do your exercises. Okay. Yeah, I totally forgot to link uh, to this in in this. So give me one second to make it easy for everybody to find, even though you can totally see. Today we're going to be doing another in class exercise called Pig Latin. Before we do that, I do want to discuss the lab exercises that will be done tomorrow. So. Thursday, control B, boom, save, notify this, this changed. Okay, so you should be able to link, link, uh, see today's exercises called Pig Latin, uh, but give me one second, just to make sure that, even though I think I'm clear, um, as far as your grade on Runestone, how you can see it, um, I'm actually not too sure. So give me a second. So how do you see your grade on Runestone? So if I go to fall, so if I go to my class and I go to my assignments, let's see, um, if I go to progress page, let's see. So I should be able to see my score. You should be able to see your score on the progress page. Um, what topics are covered in quiz three? Uh, returning things, for loops, basically everything that's returning things, for loops, while loops, um, function writing. A lot of emphasis on the for loops. They're not necessarily too difficult. Um, Let's see. Ah, yes. We'll be due. Here you go. So it's due on the seventh. So there's plenty of time to take it. Okay. Now, with regards to the lab, um, I stole. Um, I stole the lab from uh, CS50X which if you're not familiar with it, it's an open source course, meaning that I'm, I say I stole, but honestly it was freely given. 
So um, I took their, but anyway, I've taken it from basically one of their first problem sets and adapted it to make to, uh, to what we have for our current difficulties. So there are four different exercises, but you choose two of them. Okay, so there's two versions of Mario. Um, so for instance, in if you're feeling less comfortable with the code, try this one where basically you're, you're doing something similar to what we did in lab four and you're recreating this staircase over here. If you're feeling more comfortable, try this one where we're recreating this stair, these uh, two staircases. I'm not sure if the grades are current on the progress page. I will, I will check that out today, but um, I feel like there's somewhere else you can see your grades. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna have to check that. I've been planning on speaking with, uh... okay. Let's hold off on the runestone stuff until uh, later in the class, okay? Let me just explain the, uh... let me just explain this, uh, this lab, okay? So you choose one of these two, okay? Now, the big thing over here is that there are videos that were done for these, but they were originally done in C, right? So um, if I talk, so there will, so they'll be describing certain, uh, some things in code, right? They'll be talking about Boolean expressions and this is written in C. So this is what or is in C. Uh, this does not mean you need to do it in C. Uh, we're doing this in Python, but the idea here is that the algorithm the strategy you, uh, you use to solve the problem will be the same. So it's still gonna be a valuable uh, information, okay? Um, then once you are doing one, so you do one of the two, uh, two Marios and then you can choose either to do cash or credit. Cash, you tell me uh, given an amount of money, uh, amount of change that needs to be made, tell me how much, uh, how many coins, how many, the minimum number of coins needed to make that. So for instance, if I'm supposed to give you 41 cents, how many coins is that total? If I'm supposed to give you 50 cents, if, I'm, if I've just got quarters, dimes, nickels, and cents, then, the, then it's a minimum of two coins. Okay. Yeah, so progress. Uh, Credit card, um, if you're more comfortable, you can try credit, which is given a credit card number, tell me what company it comes from. And also as a result, tell me if it's you know valid or not, right? So you'll learn how, uh, how credit card numbers are valid, what makes your credit card numbers are uh, valid versus not valid. Um, there's a few, so, and what, what's cool is that this is like a real world problem because um, here are some a few card numbers that PayPal has listed uh, uh, for testing purposes. So um, these are, you know, different kinds of uh, credit cards you can test. They're not real credit cards, so I wouldn't, you know, try paying them for anything. But they would appear to a computer as val as valid. Um, one thing that will make this labs, um, one thing that you will be doing is you'll be using while loops to do input validation to make sure the student is to make sure the people enter stuff. Now let's go ahead and go back to Runestone for a bit before I go into uh, Pig Latin. So Runestone, right, boom, fall 2020. Right, so if I go to, I feel like if I go to assignments also, a way to check my grades is I can click on something like here and I can see what my score is. Or I can go to um, my assignment over here and see what my score is, right? Even though the score me is broken. So yeah, the score me button is on some assignments are not, show, uh, are not showing because I went ahead and scored them. They should be, I'm not sure why it's disappeared though. Like, um, oh, give me one second. So, so over here, 
Does it not? Yeah, should have score me for those. But is there an overall grade on the runestone portion? I'll be trying to work on that this week, weekend. That's my goal for the weekend. All right, yeah, I'm gonna try to figure that out. Worst case scenario, the TAs will have to go through and enter and, man, and manually figure it out, but such is life. You know, I would have liked to have known about these issues earlier. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, so maybe, all right, so maybe after class, instead of dealing with demos, I'll probably deal with uh, runestone stuff, okay? How's that sound? Because I want to make sure I get this, uh, this, this, if not this, if not solved, I want to get it diagnosed properly. Okay. Because I can then bring it up in the dev and developer Slack channel and, and submit bug reports that way. So. Yeah, I've already mentioned the, uh, Jenny, I've already mentioned uh, that basically a bunch of the answers disappeared for, for, for the parse and puzzle qu questions. So don't worry about it. I can tell the difference between an answer disappeared, by the way, and somebody never submitted it in the first place. All right. So let's, so we'll leave Runestone for after class. Um, if you didn't, if you're not able to stay after class to get that problem, just send me a message in chat to let me, to let me look. Yeah, worst case scenario, it's worst case scenario. I just make it easy for myself. So, because I can see, because one thing I can definitely do is see how much time that you've spent spent on work. Like, I can see specifically how much time was spent on stuff. So that does give me a good idea that basically the work was done, which is what's important for the uh, for these exercises. All right, so why did I do that? Oh, right, because I should probably screen share at this point. Okay, so um, in this one, we will be doing, so today's uh, lab, we are going to do one of the many homework, one of the other homeworks that I wanted to do, but rather than doing it as a homework, we're gonna do it as an in-class exercise. Let me go ahead and mute everybody. Okay, so today we've got, um, Ink stray manipulation may, which is all about uh, doing. Uh, we'll be we'll be submitting this one via Canvas. Okay. So this one, there should be a Canvas Dropbox already set up for it. Um, right in class exercise. Submitting text box, website URL or file upload, right. So here we're doing a uh, pig Latin. For those of you unfamiliar, because maybe English wasn't your uh, your primary language, uh, basically the idea here is that we're taking words in English and turning it into pig Latin. Pig Latin is kind of a kid's game of, of doing stuff. Uh, and I have some simplified rules for pig Latin for our computer. Uh, but basically let's take a look at what things will look like. So if I enter in letter, my output is going to be ederle. If I put in foo, my word is going to be, I'm going to get ufe back. If I put in bar, I'm going to get arbe. Spam becomes amspe. Eggs becomes gisue. Uh, Andrew becomes nidrue. Alkazam becomes lakazamwe. Charizard becomes arzardche. Right? So, and then it stops when I hit done. Okay. So when I type typing in letter, press enter, it prints out Ederle. When I and it just keeps taking entries until I hit done, and then it stop, and then the program's done. Okay. So if you put in, so you should be able, if I put in letter, it should come out. So basically your output should match. So how do we do this? This seems like a really big task. So first off, what are the rules for Pig Latin? Um, the rules for Pig Latin are as follows, and I've got them listed down here. If the word starts with a vowel, take that vowel, move it to the end, 
and add way to the end of the word. Okay. So basically, so we saw that with Alakazam way, right? Where it starts with a vowel. We moved the vowel to the end. So Lakazama. And then we added way to the end. Make sense? So with eggs, right? I took the E and it became this gibberish gsway word. All right, makes sense. With that, with that, with the vowel world rule. Okay. So the other rule is, is that if it doesn't start with a vowel, find out where that first vowel is. So, for instance, uh, with spam, we we went s p a. Then we take all the letters before the first vowel, right? Before the all the letters before the first vowel and move it to the end and then add a y. So here am so let's see how that worked. Spam became amps um and then we made it amspay. Right? We take all the letters before so with letter we became it became eteral and then we added a to the end. So eterle. Part of this is I just get to like garble words so I do like that part of this exercise. Oof become uh, foo became oof, and then we added a to the end, so oofe. So and done just stops because if you type in done, it won't translate it. It's just gonna stop. Okay. So the great thing about this is that it teaches us this exercise. The reason I really like this exercise is that these are a bunch of. Comp it seems like a really hard thing, and it is if you don't break it apart. The fancy term for what we're doing today is called functional decomposition. Or, uh, but personally, I like to refer to it as basically uh, problem solving. The idea here is that most computer programs, like writing a web server or something, they're bloody hard. They are, they're a ton of work. But any job can be done, it can be broken up into, some, into something else. If there's no vowel, that's an excellent question. Come up with something to do on your own if there's no vowel. Figure that out. So there's a couple solutions. You could just, with no vowel, you could just spit it back out me at me, or you could just add a y to the end, or you could give me an error. Either of those work. But that's a great question, Shug. Um, so we're gonna basically. So we got to split this up into multiple parts. And because we've got these multiple discrete parts that we should just kind of take a look at. So we've got what we're going to call the main function. The main function is basically, um, that's the default name in pretty much every programming language as to like, hey, look here for, um, for where all the action is going to be, all the top level action happens. Okay. So the main function is where we're going to do stuff like we're going to that's going to run the loop and that asks the user to input the word. It's going to convert the word and then it does the uh, printing out of that. And when it mentions the input reversed, uh, this is that's I had extra credit here, which we'll get into if you're if you want to try that. Um, but honestly, if we do all that in main, main is going to be like this big and that's kind of awful. So honestly, first place you want to start is maybe writing a simpler function, one that we're going to be using a lot. Find first vowel, right? Find first vowel, given a string, tell me where the first vowel is in it. If the returned index, if the returned int is the location of the first vowel in the string. If there's no vowel, just return the index of the last character. So the function is, ex is essential for helping you convert to big Latin, right? Because remember, Everything uh, we, because everything that we care about is all about the first vowel. So here with letter, we care about where the first vowel is. Same with foo, we care where the first vowel occurs. It occurs at in, in these cases it occurs at index one. Spam occurs at index. The first vowel occurs at index two. Eggs occurs at index zero. Andrew occurs at index zero. Charizard occurs at index two. Okay, so this one will be used by convert to pig Latin, and by doing this, 
in its own function, because we're going to have to use it uh, very often, this makes our code a lot shorter and a lot easier to read. Then we'll have a special specific function just for given a string, return a string that's that does the pig Latin transformation. So give it a word, give me a new word back that's the string Latin version of that word. All right. If there is no val, just return the string completely unchanged. There we go. Think about how find first val can tell you which use to rule to use. So we're going to start by working on find first val first or find first val first. Um, so come th some things to come in mind, common questions. Why is not a val? I know they have sometimes why. I don't know why they say sometimes why. It's really not. Uh, check your program against the examples above. A string has a bunch of functions to make your life easier. For instance, to lowercase and slicing are needed to write the program. So if you remember slicing, it makes it a whole lot easier. Um, this link contains everything you would ever want to know about string and then everything you don't want to know about strings as well. So, and then string concatenation or adding two strings with the plus sign will help. Um, so the way I did, uh, I would grade this normally is that this was part of two small problems and this was 50% of it. So it's 50 points. So string, to, so we can convert a string to pig Latin, can convert multiple strings using a while loop. The program stops when done, when done is entered, and then we use the functions I said for you to use. So extra credit is available. So the first is you can get extra credit by doing reverse, which just adding on to this. Um, which acts like this. So here we've got letter, letter a, and then printed in reverse. Reddle. So foo, ufe, oof, bar, arbe, rab, spam, amspe, maps. So here basically do, do, um, so here we're just simply outputting it, the word in reverse. It's actually pretty simple to do once you know the trick. If you really want to challenge though, try encrypting it using rot 13. And if you can do that, I'd love to, uh, I would like you to show me so I can give you extra credit. So ROT13 is an encryption algorithm. We might tackle that a bit when we, when we get here. OK, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going, so this is going to be the standard. OK, work on that. I'm going to get started on this. Then you can work on it yourself. And then I'll show you the answer, right? So let me go ahead and pull up my, um, my Visual Studio. Um, okay, let's go ahead and so pig, I know you can't see my screen, pig Latin.py, I'm just going to get set up. Okay, and okay, share my screen again. All right, so first thing we wanted to do is that we know we want a main function. Uh, def, you almost always want to put your main function at the bottom, just because like that uh, that happens. This is typically not the way you set up a main function in Python, but honestly, it works right now. As you'll see, the way you typically set up a main in Python is doing this. If underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main, what in the world is that? So. It's irrelevant for right now, so I'm just going to do it in the classic styles. Um, what was what is this? So for the since somebody is asking what it is, basically it's saying if the name of the program you're running is if the secret name of the program you're running is main. In other words, if this is the file you are currently running, then do the code that's been indented in here. That's what it's saying. So basically, this if statement says if you are currently running this file. Why is main always at the bottom? Excellent question. Because um, because imports are typically at the top. And then, so what I can do is that when I'm doing something, if I have tons and tons of lines, I can scroll all the way to the bottom and know where all, that, uh, where all the things are gonna happen, right? Over here, you can see basically that we've got 
um, we've got our print statements at the bottom for testing, right? So we've kind of been doing that already. The only difference is with main, we just basically do this. I know it seems like a silly change, but it just helps me. Or that's just the way I define this particular program. So we'll have a main function, whatever. Um, we're gonna we'll fill in the blanks later there. Um, then we have a def uh, convert to pig Latin K, okay. and we will pass that as well. Right, pass just simply says leave it blank. Please don't you know? Please ignore it. I don't want it to crash. Um, and def find first val. Because if I don't have that, by the way, um, and I just try to run it, um, it's going to say, hey, I expected an indented block, or there's been an unexpected end of file if it's indented. I expected indented block. You put something here, but then nothing really happened. So that's why we have a pass. Pass is there so that we can easily write things. So find first val. So find first val takes in the string, right? So it's going to take in, I'll call it word. And we want to find out where the first, we want to find the index of the first val. So we're going to say index is equal to zero. And then we are going to return that index when we find it, right? So we're going to look for this. So how do we do this? Iterate through every letter in word, right? And if it's a val, um, then we return the index. Great. So we are, so, okay. For this one, I want you, I was just thinking of all the pitfalls that can you, you can possibly fall into. So um, I'm going to give you five minutes and then I want to check in, see how many people were able to solve it in five minutes, which is going to be eh, maybe half the class. And then we're going to, and then I want to talk about the various pitfalls people had in the five minutes they had. So um, if you do crash, and burn on this one, on this function, that's valuable data because um, you will not be the only one with this issue. Okay, so five minutes, try to do find first val, right? So um, just for example, if you give me apple, I should get, uh, then you should get zero. If you enter uh, X, Y, Z, A, B, A, B, C, that should give me um, 0, 1, 2, 3. That should give me index 3. Got it? OK. Does it have to be a function? Yes, because making it a function will make it so we can use it and convert to pig Latin. And so to test, so if you want to test it, you can just simply do find for, you can say um, test word is equal to blah or whatever you want it to be find first val test word and that way basically the stuff outside your pretty uh, outside functions is all reserved for just testing it okay and so here right now i'm going to get zero no matter what but one of the important things is even though it's not complete it's not crashing right so that's a very important step so let's try give you until um until 5.35, okay, and then I will be back. Oh, 2.35, 5.35, come on, that'd be a bit long.
Uh, no, Code Lens, I think, is just in the browser. Um, it's a filter feature built into the RuneStone um, thing. All right, so by so let's go ahead, go to the, your participants window, click uh, go, uh, yes if you're able to uh, complete it, no if you were not able to complete it. Ah, more people than I thought. All right, where did people run into difficulty? Tell me in the chat or unmute yourself and tell me, or rather tell the class. And don't be shy. According to this, 80% of the class wasn't able to do it in five minutes, which just simply means I had overly high expectations. So it lists, tells me the last vowel in the word. Ah, so Chloe, that means that you are not returning soon enough. Anybody else have that problem? And I like this one because it has a lot of different ways that this can go wrong, even though it's very simple. 
So let's take a look at, at what the way in, at, at how we get to an answer. Okay. So if index is equal to, so we start index is equal to zero. And we're going to go through and say for, let's see, actually what happens if I do, okay, for, oh, cool, for target list in expression list. Very cool. Okay, no need for that though. We're going to say for um, index in range, huh, I guess we don't need this over here. So, or we can just simply say for, yeah. So I set you up for failure actually in, in a couple places. So if I say for uh, I in range, so here we care about the index. So I have to say range length of word, right? There's actually a couple different ways to do this. Hey, can you? Can I what? Can you? All right, for I range in range length of word. We can do, can I do another one? Annie, he's requesting help. Yep. So there's a couple ways to do this. The first way to do it is to do this way, which is for I and range length of word. Since we care about the index, we just simply say for, okay, if I, so let's go ahead and get the letter for that. Letter is equal to, um, word at index I. Okay. So we get the word at that index, right? So then we can do, um, sorry, then we can say, hey, if letter is a vowel, if letter equal equals A or equal equals B or whatever, but instead I'm going to actually make it or sorry, letter equals A, letter equals E, letter equals I. But instead, I'm going to do my shortcut, which is if letter is in A, E, I, O, or and U. Then we found what we then what we ha happened here is that we found where we are. So honestly, we have our answer here. We can just simply say I is the proper index, return it. And it turns out we don't need any of this index over here. Sometimes what you lay down first at your first idea doesn't really need doesn't need to exist. So chalk that up one to me tricking you. Okay. Next, another way we can do this is that we can simply say, now a common thing that could happen is that if you decided to say index was equal to I, what's gonna happen? This will return. Yep, I will. But good point, Kristen. Will we need to convert the the uh, word to lowercase? We can do that. Uh, we can assume we're going to do that somewhere else. Okay. So what's going to happen here? This is a common mistake. Well, if I go through this X Y Z A B C D E, what's going to happen is that it's going to go through. It's going to set index equal to it's going to say, aha, A is a vowel. So store the index of that in index and let's keep going. So that's why I, why inside here, I just simply report, put return index or return I because it's going to, because honestly, it's going to, um, honestly, we're done. And when we hit a return, we don't really need to keep going. Another thing you could do is use a special word we haven't learned yet called break, which breaks a loop. It just kills it, stops the loop. Special word. I'm going to teach you a couple special words today that you haven't been exposed to yet, which may like make your life easier. So break will kill a loop. Okay. Now the um, another thing you can now another way you can do it is as follows. For, as somebody said, for car in word, if character is a vowel, um, you can do this. 
return index of that character, or rather return word dot index. Yeah, it's word dot index character, which just tells me where's the first place that character occurs. Makes sense. Can I explain this one again? So what I'm saying is we're going to go letter by letter, right? Not index by index, but right through the letters. Don't care about the indices right here. And I'm going to say, and since this goes from right to left, I can ask myself, is this A, E, I, or U? If it is A, E, I, or U, or U that's what this says. If this letter is in this string, right? So that's a way to check for, to see if it's, this is effectively the same as me saying, if car equal equals a or car equal equal equals e or car e, car equal equals c and so on and so forth not c c is not vowel neither is d i a e i swear i'll learn my i'll learn english one of these days um so what does so we detected a vowel? What does this last line do? Word.index says, given the um, given this character, tell me the first place that the first index that occurs in this word. And the reason why we do this here, why the reason why we do this inside of here is because we didn't we don't know what's going to occur when. We don't know uh, if there's an A first or an E first or an I first or an O first or an U first. Now to deal with um, the very last character in the string, uh, I'll simply say index of, to return the last index of a character, sorry, of a word, um, just in case there's no vowels, it says to return the last index. So do that, I'll just simply say, hey, index is equal to length of word minus one, that's the very last index. And if we don't get a return statement, I'm just going to return here. How do you make the loop stop if you find a vowel? Well, this uh, there's two ways to, to stop to stop a loop. You can stop a loop by stopping the function it's in by returning, which is what happens on line ten. Another way you can stop a loop, kill it dead, is to have break. If it hits a word called break, then it will stop before it even gets there. Right. So, for instance, this loop over here would never actually run, or it would immediately start and immediately stop no checking would ever happen. Okay. Um, finally, on the one last thing I can do is for, and I believe this is, and this is what, what is, what was length, my, a word minus one? So length is the length of the word, minus one to get minus, to get that length minus one, which is the last possible index since we start at zero. So for instance, length of this. So for instance, length of this sucker over here, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, uh, it is eight characters long, minus one to get the final index at E. Make sense? Okay, last thing we can do here is we can do is that we can use something, we can do a different for loop. We can use a, just like, remember how I showed you something called zip a cup uh, last week? You can zip some, you can zip up two things to iterate through them together. Well, sometimes you wanna iterate through both the index and the thing you're looking at at the same time. So we can do that, uh, we can do that pretty straightforward by doing this. For index letter in enumerate word. So given a sequence, I can go through two things at once. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like in practice. Okay. And I may have gotten the order wrong, but that's why I'm going to print it out first. So I did blah 
as my as my word. And as you'll see, I did four letter index letter in enumerate word. So right, we've so this is another uh, loop. As opposed to doing range, you could do enumerate. And what enumerate does is that it says, give me two things. I care about, about both the index and the thing. Make sense? I care about both the index and I care about the thing. So here I'm gonna say, um, so all I have to do here is say, if letter, in A E I O U. So, in other words, if that specific letter is a vowel, boom, return index. No, no need to to do this to use the 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 list operation to, uh, to check what list the index is at. Make sense? So, enumerate. By the way, you may have noticed that it's not in the textbook at this point. Haven't gone through it. That's perfectly fine. This is one of those kind of um, really useful features that exists in Python. And I figure, hey, you, you, it's one of those things that you don't ever need. This is completely unnecessary. The program would be fine and work perfectly without it. Um, the programming language will work fine and perfectly without it, but it's nice to have. So we now have got this find first val function, okay? So there's a bunch of different ways we can do that. It's perfectly fine. However you want to do it. There were like the reason and the reason I did so many ways is to show you that there was no one right answer for this. Also, there was no one wrong answer. There were a ton of wrong answers and a ton of right answers. So, um, but in the end, so long as it works and it works relatively well, so, so long as it works, that's really what it matters at the end of the day. So let's take a look at convert to pig Latin now, which is going to be the main thing in our program. So convert to pig Latin. We can also assume for this one, it's going to be lowercase. Given a word, I want to return that word, but in pig Latin form. So basically this requires us to do a couple of things. So the first thing we want to do is basically we have some condition we need to figure out, right? And we know basically there's two possibilities for the, there's basically uh, three ways this is gonna work according to the program, okay? There's three things that can happen. Um, if it starts with a vowel, do something. If it, if it doesn't start with a vowel, do something else. And if there is no vowel, just return it unchanged. Make sense? So completely unchanged. Hmm. Does that work with find first vowel? Return the index of the last character. Hmm. What if it's everything but it ends with a vowel? Hmm. Well, we'll get and see if the specifications are wrong. That can happen sometimes, especially for me. So let's just think about this. Uh, one condition that we have here is if word starts with a vowel. Another thing is if word um, word starts, let's see. Let's see, um, otherwise we'll do an else. And then a has no vowels case. All right, so let's just start at the beginning. Um, if the word starts with a vowel, maybe, we'll see. We're gonna, we're gonna start by programming it incrementally, okay? So what is the condition? So how can I tell if the word starts with a vowel? Um, or rather, let me rephrase that. What is the laziest way? How can I be very lazy in figuring out whether or not it starts with a vowel? 
is there something I can do that's really freaking lazy? Kristen's got the general idea. How do we check if index is zero? What, what is index in this context? Isn't that the first letter? Right, but so do we have something that can help us here that we've already written? Yes, whatever, yes. Katrina and Vinny, that's specifically it. If find first vowel, so let's go ahead and let's find out what the index of the first vowel is. So indexed first vowel, index first or index vowel is equal to find first vowel of that word, right? So we're gonna, because we got to use that. A global variable would be incon inconvenient because you, there's no, you want to keep it as, because you want to keep your program as clean as possible and having to jump up and jump down to check each, what each, um, what your variables are would be very inconvenient. Anyway, talking about that, let's minimize that. So index val is equal to find first val word. So if, so now if word, so if index val equal equals zero, right? Another thing we can do is let's see, has no vowels. Well, we said if it has no vowels, return the last index. If has no vowels, so let's do that for next. So that would be index val equal equals length of word minus one. And in that case, we know what we want to do. We would want to return, we just want to spit the word right back out at the user, right? That's what's specified. That's that part done. Assuming I can spell, right? I'm going to remind you I got my PhD in computer science, not in English. So spelling errors are expected at this point. Okay. And now we can say elif and then otherwise else over here. Else. Okay, so if the index starts with a vowel, so if the word starts with a vowel, do something. If it ends with a vowel or, because that's effectively what this is gonna do. If this ends with a vowel or it didn't have a vowel, because find first vowel returned the same thing here and we'll address that later. Then return the word, just spit it back out. Otherwise we gotta do something else. So let's take a look at what it said to do if we've got our first vowel. Whoops. If we've got our first vowel, okay, for our first vowel, if the word starts with a vowel, so we're in that if statement, move that vowel to the end of the word and additionally add way to the end of it. So that seems like a lot, but we're gonna do that in one line because even though I one liners are typically I something I say don't do that. It makes sense here because honestly, there's three parts to that. There is the um so first off, let's actually work from the end here. It says okay. Ah. Here we go. Find first so here. You gotta get used to using the Windows keyboard shortcuts. That would have helped there. Okay. So at the end of this is gonna be W A Y, right? That makes sense. And then we are going to have whatever that first vowel is, which I'll just call vowel, we'll replace it later with an expression. And then we have Let's see. So right, 
if the word starts with a vowel, move it the vowel to the end of the word and additionally add weight to the end. So that would be everything after, right? So really what we've got here is everything after the vowel plus the vowel plus the way. Everybody understand this pseudocode or did I lose people along the way? Okay, so we know that we've got a, so we know that we've got, if we're, so here we're just kind of going through our conditions, okay? So right now we're assuming, okay, if the word starts with a vowel, so we're dealing with Andrew or eggs or, um, or Icarus, or Ocular, um, we're not worried about input validation at the moment. Um, Kristen, you had the right idea. I'm just working up to there for everybody. Um, so. The idea here is that index val, right? You've got, uh, if the word starts with a val, right? Then what are we going to do? We got to transform this, this word. We've got to transform that word. Specifically, we want to take the word, um, take the val from that word, move it to the end of that word, and then add way to it. Does that make sense? So we've got three parts to it. These things don't actually exist yet. I've got, or these two parts don't actually exist yet. So what is an expression that would me, that would give me the vowel? What expression would give me this vowel, right? Where we, the word starts with a vowel, move the vowel to the end of the word. So what expression gives me the, of the vowel? Right, that's right, Alan. So word, zero, right? We know that if the index vowel is equal to zero, right? If the index, if the first vowel is at index zero, we can just simply say, hey, give me index zero. So now we've got something plus the vowel plus way. Now what's everything after the vowel? Now, as many people said, well, we can just simply slice it. We can say word one to the end of the word. This gives me everything but the first letter. Okay. This gives me everything but the first letter. So what we are doing here is we say, hey, return everything but the first letter, the first letter, and then add way to the end. So if we test this with Apple, Let's go ahead and change it to uh, convert the big Latin. Pull away, which makes sense, right? We took the apple, the A from apple, moved it to the end and added way. Let's go ahead and do a la Kazam. And that will be la Kazam way. Okay, so now let's go ahead and figure out what this expression is, where if the word, right, the otherwise move all the letters from before the first vowel to the end of the word and additionally add A to the end of it. So this should be very similar. It should be basically, so we have something, he, so you'll want a slice expression, some slice over here, plus another slice of the string over here, and add A to the end, where this is everything after the first vowel, and this is everything before the first vowel, 
and the first vowel itself. So take, uh, so let's go ahead and take some time and see if you can't work on that one and figure that one out on your own. And again, here you want to replace slice one and slice two with 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 some expression on a uh, some slice expression on word.
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what we want to do is we want to get everything that comes after the first vowel here and everything before the first vowel, but up to and not including it. So everything after the first vowel, where is that? Well, we know the first vowel occurs at index vowel over here. We solved it. So we're going to say, hey, word index vowel plus one. So that gives me the index after the first vowel. Actually, we want to move, what do we want to do? We want to move all the letters before the first vowel, all the letters before the first vowel to the end. So we want the first vowel on here. So from the first vowel to the end, and then this part says, hey, word, so I'd like everything up to, but not including the first vowel. So spam gives me amspay. So Nathan, and uh, so the thing is, is that it really depends on where your word on where your word is. If you try it with spam or with, uh, try it with the word thread. Ed thread is what you get. But if you're trying it with a static word, with a static, if you're just trying it with word one to the end, then you're assuming that basically the vowel occurs at index one. But you don't know it occurs at index one. It could occur at index two or index three. So it would work for, for words like tool or, or react. Yes, what's your question, Cameron? Um, so when you, uh, does your code work when you test it on a word that doesn't have any vowels in it? Let's see. Like rhythm. Okay, because for some reason it wasn't doing it for mine, but I, I, I switched some stuff around. Okay, thank you. And for the last vowel, because the last vowel is there. Um, right. So now let's go ahead and get this uh, while this part done. So now let's go ahead and say repeat doing this. Use a while loop until the user types the string done. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and say um, done is equal to false. This is one. Of my, this is one of my favorite pa ways to do a while loop or do handle user input. While done is equal to false. While not done. So while we're not done with with stuff because that pair th this makes this is like reading english right over here while it's not done do this and then when do we stop well let's see well what do we want to do each time we want to grab the input from the user no prompt whatsoever so we're just going to say input is equal to a word let's say if word is done done the variable is equal to true. So according to the way that Aaron, according to the way that I've, that I've specified this, then it would be, then the word B would be B. I mean, yeah, you can, you can use an input prompt, but here we're gonna just grab the word. And so now let's go ahead and test main main and so let's run it and let's just so here it's just waiting for input input y'all read done and so it stops so now let's go ahead and now 
sanitize this, right? Let's go ahead and make it so that we only want to deal with lowercase word. So word is equal to word.lower. This converts everything to lowercase. And then all we have to do is now say uh, pig is equal to convert to pig Latin the word. And so now main is really, 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 really clean. Right? Essentially, it just simply says word is equal to some input. Convert it to a word. Um, now, now let's go ahead. Now I know I've made a mistake, so don't worry. So let's go ahead and do apple. Hmm. What did I forget to do? Anyone? You forgot to print your results. Yep. I do that all the time. That was actually totally an unforced error. But it's also one that's really common for students to make. So let's go with uh, pig, which would be ig pay. Let's go with spin, which would be in spay. Let's go with uh, word, which should be ordway. Um, let's go with apple pill way. Let's do done, which says on day. And then, oh, right. We wanted to stop when we got to done, right? So what we want to do is Maybe instead, so what can we do here instead? If word is equal, so there's a couple ways we can approach this. If we can move this up here and simply say, if word is equal to done, we can do this. So if word is equal to done, do this. Otherwise, print it out. Another thing we can do is that we can just simply do um, right if word is equal to done right let's put it back over here we can just simply instead instead of having this we can just simply say break it right and that will break out of the loop break breaks a loop whether it be in a for loop or a while loop another thing we can do is we can actually change it to be, we can actually change this up quite a bit. And we can do some, and this is just a weird way of some, the way some while loops work, which is that we can do, um, well, actually, now that way would just be too much complicated. So forget what I'm saying, but that, but basically moving done up to be over here with an if else statement probably works, me, it looks the most natural. Except, um, so while not done, Get the word. If it's done, set done equal to true. Yeah, this probably works the easiest, but there are other ways to do it. All right, so it is 317. So let me stop recording.